Hare Krishna devotees, welcome to the day fourth of our 21 days Srimad Bhagavat, Bhagavatam reading challenge. Our today's speaker is an initiated disciple of His Holiness J. Prataka Swami Maharaj and has been practicing Krishna consciousness since 1989. Is a co-founder, managing director and CEO of Goranga Soft Tech co-founder and director of Goloka Education, co-founder and director of Gokul Kids Education. On the behalf of Iskun Bhagavatam Mahavidyalaya, North America, I'd like to welcome our today renowned speaker, His Grace, Ramagri Dhari Das, Hare Krishna Hare Krishna. <clears throat> Thank you so much for uh, having me in this uh, Sangha. It's always a, a pleasure and also a wonderful opportunity to be in Vaishnava Association uh, glorifying Srimad Bhagavatam. So this Bhagavatam Mahavidyalaya, um, our dear Bratsundar Prabhu, good friend of mine. So he had a long desire when he conceived this project to uh, take it global and I'm very happy that um, his time of service and enthusiastic participation of all the devotees is um, you know, making it happen. And uh, wonderfully, this service of churning Srimad Bhagavatam is going on. So before we start, we will offer some invocation prayers and then um, get going with our context. Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Om Namo Bhagavate Vasudevaya Narayanam Namaskrityam Naram Jaiva Narottamam Devim Saraswati Vyasam Tato Jaya Mudirae Ashtapraya Shobhadreshu Nityam Bhagavata Sevaya Bhagavati Uttama Shloke Bhaktir Bhavati Naishtiki Om Ajnana Timirandasya Jnananjana Shalakayam Chakshurun Militam Yenam Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaham Nama Om Vishnu Padayam Krishna Prashtaya Bhutalem Srimate Bhakti Vedantam Swamin Niti Naminem Namaste Saraswati Deve Gauravani Pracharine Nirvisesha Sunyavadi Paschatya Deshatari name Jai Sri Krishna Chaitanyam Prabhu Nityanandam Shri Advaita Gadadar Shri Vasadi Gaurabhakta Vrinda Hare Krishna Hare Krishna 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 Hare 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 Rama Hare Rama 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 Hare 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 Krishna. So we are in for a discussion from fourth canto, uh, discussing about Purva Maharaj's pastimes. Srimad Bhagavatam, the Namala Puran, and it is so relevant as well as relatable for a enthusiastic practitioner there is no end to churning this nectar one of the uh, disciples of Shla Prabhupada did mention that Prabhupada's purports are like milk ocean the more you churn the more you get nectar right. like during the milk ocean churning pastime nectar came Lakshmi came, Danvantri came, Shriman Narayana as Mohini Murti came. So, when you chant Shla Prabhupada's purport, definitely we get transcendental instructions which are all like nectar. By following those instructions, we will get completely freed from this material bondage. And as per Sanatana Goswami, this transformation that we get by reading Shla Prabhupada's purport 
is actually the real wealth. Huh? In Bhagavata Mahima Stotra, Sanatana Goswami says that this Mahadana, Srimad Bhagavatam is a great wealth. From that perspective, Shla Prabhupada's purport gives us the Lakshmi, the wealth. And Shla Prabhupada's purports also gives us the cure for materialistic disease which Danvantri as a transcendental physician offers. And finally, by reading Srimad Bhagavatam, they come to the shelter of lotus feet of the Supreme Lord, Srimad Narayana, Supreme Lord Krishna, Krishna's to Bhagavan Swayam, which is the purpose of Srimad Bhagavatam. Interestingly, the Prabhu Prabhupada disciple mentioned that if you misunderstand, if you try to wrongly apply Srila Prabhupada's instructions in your life, that will be like a poisonous effect. In the sense that many a times we try to uh, read Srila Prabhupada's books and apply in my own uh, conditioned manner. So, hence it is always advised and encouraged that we are always discussing Srimad Bhagavatam in the Assembly of Vaishnavas. So, Duro Maharaj's episode is a wonderful episode. As a Falashruti, Sukadeva Goswami Pad explains uh, that many things that he explains as a part of this um, narration that this is one one episode where somebody when they when they read they are blessed with all the opulences that they had imagined desired uh -huh. which even Lord offers to Guru Maharaj so even if you want to get some so called um, Dharma, Artha, Kama, Moksha, the Purusharthas, uh, they still get that by surrendering ourselves to the Supreme Lord. But if somebody wants to get pure devotional service, which is also equally offered, so the Supreme Lord offered both to Guru Maharaj. So within our limited time, we will be really scratching through the surface of this, uh, you know, episode. I'm sure, you know, this agenda of 21-day challenge, which Mahavidyalaya have uh, conceived is to encourage us that we'll give you a teaser which will make us to, you know, uh, go, go closer to, you know, reading in depth Srimad Bhagavatam. Sometimes teaser entices us, oh, maybe there is some more news so when we are discussing uh, this series of Guru Maharaj, we will also speak like a teaser. Some unfinished stuff will anyway be there. So I'll seek your apologies or you know seek your forgiveness to not that we will not be able to deal the entire chapter, entire context into the depth as it is needed. So Guru Maharaj. Um, it's a very interesting, simple, you know, episode, but it has got so much of depth in the sense that we can all correlate where from Duro Maharaj is coming in terms of his uh, desire to see the Lord to eventually what he has accomplished. So, fourth canto, chapter eight. That's where Duro Maharaj's pastime. Uh, begin. Vidura and Maitreya are discussing and Maitreya Rishi is imparting uh, the details about Dhruva Maharaj's pastimes. So the way I have conceived the presentation is every chapter, we will be discussing at least few chapters. There are close to five chapters in Dhruva Maharaj's pastimes. So let's see how much we are able to cover but then at least uh, I want to highlight some important points per chapter and one shloka which I have picked it up as the, the shloka of the chapter to take home some lessons. As I said, that we will never be able to complete anything. So 
the incompleteness of this complete you know uh, endeavor is in itself complete in the sense that just by we trying to do this endeavor of associating with shrimad bhagavatam will make our endeavor to go closer to krishna uh, a success so for the first chapter of which means the eighth chapter of the fourth canto we are going to learn five things and we will read one verse and then we'll go to the next chapter i was told that i can go on for 40 45 minutes i'm not sure wherever i have to whenever i have to stop just in case if i go overboard please stop me and uh, i'll be obliged to you know look at you all so the idea is that the episode of dhruva maharaj not allowed to sit on the lap of his father uttanapad while his brother uttama uh, was allowed that was a very petty simple episode when compared to you know uh, whatever big big issues this world is facing but then because dhruva maharaj was a kshatriya and the words spoken by uh, his step mother he couldn't even digest the fact what i am not allowed to sit on my father's lap and the reason that he was given by his step mother he couldn't even comprehend dhruva maharaj couldn't even comprehend and the the prc words of uh suniti was so uh so because he was he was so so upset right, that he really wanted to approve a point so i have five important reflections or five important uh lessons from this chapter i will state those five lessons and i will read one particular verse and then we will turn this context then we'll go to the next chapter then we'll go to the next chapter number 1 i call it as a transcendental trigger technically every one of us in our life we get some triggering situations sometimes we are instigated sometimes we have some challenges sometimes we have some situations somebody you know pushes us to an extreme where we are we are challenged we are questioned but in a vaishnava's life when a person who is sincerely seeking spiritual knowledge when is somebody sincerely trying to practice krishna consciousness in spite of his conditioning krishna arranges some transcendental trigger we can give us several examples shila prabhu pad leaving the house it was of a you know this is a small small trigger i mean there were many many you know instances prabhupad could have left but a small trigger billo mangala takura trying to become you know free from the entanglement with the uh, so called uh, prostitute ramanuja acharya leaving the home madhva acharya going to you know uh, badrik ashram so like that we can go on and dhruva maharaj in this case so this transcendental trigger is something that each and every one of us should watch out for especially when we are practicing krishna consciousness krishna personally attends and helps us especially from within as paramatma and from without as spiritual master both shiksha and diksha gurus he is trying to help us to progress in krishna consciousness in sometimes by giving sometimes by withdrawing so dhruva maharaj's episode began with a transcendental trigger just a small trigger but then because he was a kshatriya it became like a you know a volcano erupted out of his hand in just he you know uh, left but then the transcendental trigger because he was a blessed soul because he was going to be you know uh, uh, doing a revolutionary nothing and he is going to uh, set a very strong precedence uh, so there was a there was an arrangement of him meeting narada muni so that's the second thing if somebody is uh, taking advantage of 
the transcendental figure, which means we need to learn to be recognizing. In case of Durva Maharaj, initially he did not, but because we are reading his episode retrospectively, we are reading that. In case of Durva Maharaj, as a pastime, he had, you know, he had uh, just got angry with this, you know, uh, situation. He really wanted to see the Supreme Lord as per the direction of his mother. But then retrospectively, when we read, we can also apply it in our life. Sometimes in our lives, some challenges, some situations, some circumstances wherein Krishna wanted to communicate something. Maybe Krishna wants to help us to take some steps towards uh, an active Krishna consciousness. Srila Prabhupada writes in one place in um, teachings of uh, Queen Kunti or teachings of you know Lord Kapila. In one place, uh, there is a very nice point that he writes that my business was going very well. Everything was in place. Everything was in order. But one fine day, everything started to collapse. And I was wondering what was going on. Suddenly, how everything started to collapse. And suddenly, a couple of months later, I was executing the orders of my spiritual master. So apparently, my quote-unquote failure, which the world sees I failed, happened to be a stepping stone to the next phase of my life. So the transcendental trigger, which triggered Guru Maharaj to leave the house, enabled to him to meet Narada Muni. So the verse that we are going to read of this chapter is chapter number 4, text 8. Text, sorry, uh, Canto 4, text, chapter 8, text 25. It's a very small purport. I will read that purport and we will you know, further turn this. Narada stattupa karnya gyatva tasya chitirshitam prishtva mudhani agadhine nam pani na praha vishmita. The great sage Narada overheard this news and understanding all the activities of Dhruva Maharaj, he was struck with wonder. He approached Dhruva and touching the boy's head with his all virtuous hand, he spoke as follows. Purport. When Dhruva Maharaja was talking with his mother, Suniti, of all the incidents that had taken place in the palace, Narada was not present. Thus, the question may be raised, how Narada overheard all these topics? The answer is that Narada is Trikalagnya. He is so powerful that he can understand the past, future and present of everyone's heart just like the super soul, the supreme personality of God. Therefore, after understanding the strong determination of Dhruva Maharaja, Narada came to help him. It may be explained in this way. The supreme personality of God is present in everyone's heart. And as soon as he understands that a living entity is serious about entering devotional service, he sends his representative. In this way, Narada was sent to Dhruva Maharaj. This is explained in the Chaitanya Charitamrita. Guru Krishna Prasade Paya Pak Bhakti Lata Bija. By the grace of the spiritual master and Krishna, one can enter into devotional service. Because of Dhruva Maharaja's determination, Krishna, the super soul, immediately sent his representative Narada to initiate him. So this is so so wonderful. This is communicating a, a very important message and a second learning from this chapter is if you so desire, you are provided help. I always tell this to our students. If a person is chanting sincerely, if a person is having sincere desire for practicing Krishna consciousness, two things will have to happen. One, you will get Vaishnavas coming into your life. Somewhere from somebody will come and knock at your doors. 
he'll become he'll befriend you he will come to your house you'll you know uh, meet him so vaishnavas are carriers of the lord's message they come in your life and second thing is that they will offer services you will get service opportunity and instructions so our acknowledgement if we keep analyzing keep keep introspecting am i progressing in krishna consciousness one of the ways by which we can be assured that we are on the right track is when a vaishnava comes in our life and we get service opportunity so when you get service opportunity you know that your hare krishna maha mantra that you chanted was heard recognized reciprocated and you are properly you know in the right track so the second part of this first first chapter of guru maharaj pastime after transcendental trigger the activity is meeting of narada muni in our lives when we get transcendental trigger we take advantage of them if we follow that track if we try to see krishna's hand behind it if we start you know uh, yearning for krishna if we start searching for krishna we start going closer to krishna help will be extended help will be provided it is impossible for us to be left alone in dark krishna cannot let us suffer apparent suffering is only just some trigger for us to come for come closer to krishna the third aspect of this chapter by which we are you know going to learn something for us is when spiritual master comes in our life when spiritual authorities comes in our life when a uh, service opportunity comes in our life it is it is not just going to come just like that we will be tested we will be tested for our seriousness in performing our devotional service so in case of duro maharaj narada muni tested narada muni tested by putting him through various tough questions putting him through various you know allurements distractions uh, shila prabhupad writes in bhagavad gita chapter 4 text 34 a very famous verse that with the pranipadan in that shloka shila prabhupad writes seven steps to reach transcendental knowledge to gain transcendental knowledge so very interesting seven steps number 1 approach bona fide spiritual master number 2 surrender fully to that bona fide spiritual master number 3 perform menial service without false prestige to that spiritual master and number 4 satisfy the spiritual master by your menial service number 5 inquire from the spiritual master and number 6 pass the test conducted by the spiritual master and number 7 vidya gyan transcendental knowledge will be imparted so transcendental knowledge being imparted is a seventh step prior to that there are six steps approach bona fide spiritual master or in this case because of your inquisitiveness because of your seriousness because of the blessings of the lord that you took your transcendental trigger seriously spiritual master was sent to you then surrender guru maharaj is going to surrender uh, so eventually narada muni is performing some uh, test on guru maharaj so in our own devotional life also we will be tested krishna tested arjuna before speaking bhagavad gita 2.7 arjuna surrendered 2.9 krishna started speaking between 2.7 and 2.9 words uh, krishna spoke to arjuna in a manner that he wanted to reassure if arjuna was serious in learning bhagavad gita so when arjuna showed his seriousness and commitment yes i am interested krishna started to speak uh, you know bhagavad gita so it is important that uh, we have to understand in our devotional life we will be definitely tested if we are ready for the test we are in for a very interesting 
long stint of happy Krishna consciousness and eventually getting into eternity. So, the idea is that uh, when Guru Maharaja attended the test, passed the test, in the fourth stages, the process for understanding the Supreme Lord was imparted. Initiation happened. So when we all are in our Krishna consciousness movement, when we are conducted initiation test, sometimes we will, we will find it you know, funny. Why initiation test? Why IDC course? Why so and so? But it's a traditional process. Even, you know, um, Duruva Maharaj went through that. So from that perspective, after Narada Muni conducted the test, Narada Muni imparted knowledge, Divya Gyan, and he initiated him onto the mantra of how to see the Supreme Lord. So the fourth learning from this chapter is that Narada Muni taught him how to do the process. I'm not going to the details of this process. Narada Muni is giving all the finer details of the process. As I said, since we are doing a trailer learning, so let us learn the macro lessons and then I'm sure each and, each and every one of us will have our own forum to learn some more details in the chapter. So the process of approaching seeing the Lord, uh, how to see the Lord, what mantra to chant, uh, what is the sitting posture, what is the frame of mind that Narada Muni, uh, you know, uh, Duru Maharaj should have to even attract the Supreme Lord's attention. Narada Muni is giving all the details. And Dhruva Maharaj is, you know, very, very thankful to Narada Muni, accepted Narada Muni as a spiritual master. He is bowing down and then proceeding towards uh, his agenda of seeing the Supreme Lord. And hence, the fifth lesson from this chapter is about the process. Actually, that he was important to him. He followed it. So the fifth, fifth stage, the fifth lesson is the actual meditation, the actual tapasya, the actual austerity that Duru Maharaj you know, uh, performed. So this comprises the first chapter. Transcendental trigger which leads him to meeting Narada Muni. Meeting of Narada Muni helps him to you know, be evaluated for his seriousness in seeing the Supreme Lord. And eventually when he passes the test, the process of learning the Supreme, seeing the Supreme Personality of God is very much uh, uh, imparted and eventually he is performing the process to attract the Supreme Lord. So this comprises this first chapter of uh, Duru Maharaj's pastime, the chapter titled Duru Maharaj Leaves Home for the Forest. So this actually helps us in our endeavor, our journey to go closer to Krishna and all the Duru Maharaj followed are all applicable to us and they are all made available to us by our dearest Srila Prabhupada. Then we'll go to the second chapter of this uh, series which is about uh, um, Duru Maharaj returns home. So this is chapter 9. It is but obvious that when uh, Duru Maharaj is seeing uh, Krishna when he, he, when he practiced the uh, Krishna consciousness as suggested by Narada Muni, it is but obvious that Duru Maharaj is able to um, see Krishna face to face. He could see the transcendental form of Krishna. Of course, what happened was that uh, uh, because of his intense meditation, uh, he was uh, um, he was he was very much creating a suffocation for so many people out there. So, all the demigods, they had to go and recommend. So, what happens is that the process of devotional service, as recommended by the spiritual master, when a disciple performs, then the Supreme Lord definitely, you know, gets attracted towards that because you are being recommended. And at the same time, it is... Uh, rightful claim, as Prabhupada says, when a son just remain a dutiful son to a rich father, he is due for all the inheritance. Similarly, when we are able to perform 
our function, when we are able to perform our uh, devotional service as a dutiful follower, then we are definitely in for a, a, a great blessings. So this chapter also has got, uh, you know, uh, four, five lessons, chapter nine. First lesson is Darshana. So this Darshana is uh, something very important. The Darshana of the Lord is made possible only by the Lord's free will. As Rupa Goswami explains in Nectar of Instruction, that the Darshana of the Supreme Lord or the blessings of the Supreme Lord in our devotional journey, the blessings from the Supreme Lord is not, can, it cannot be dictated just because I am performing sadhana bhakti, just because I am performing, you know, devotional service. It is not that I can dictate the Lord. The Lord out of his own free will, the Lord out of his own, you know, uh, uh, or, or his own uh, uh, happiness that, you know, he convinced, he's convinced that yes, this endeavor put in by the devotees to be appreciated, then he bestows his mercy. Damodar Leela and so many Leela you know, talks about that. So Darshana is definitely uh, awarded when we follow the process given. That is why Srila Prabhupada time and again says that if you follow the footsteps of Vaishnava Acharyas, you, know, you will definitely be able to see the, you know, get to the right destination. In fact, the very famous pastime where Srila Prabhupada's you know, uh, comments about everyone have to be 100% Krishna conscious. Then he says 90% Krishna conscious. Then he says 80% Krishna conscious. He says even if you are 70% Krishna conscious, you can see Krishna face to face. You know? Then finally when he was uh, you know, leaving, one day what he went uh, you know, closer to him and uh, went to his room. Krishna Prabhupada, I'm so sorry, but I can't be even 60%, 70% Krishna conscious. Okay. Then Shla Prabhupada says, you hold on to my dhoti, I will know a shortcut to go to Krishna. I'll tell you a small pastime, I'm sure uh, uh, you all may have heard. This pastime happened in Radha Rasa Bihari temple in Juhu. There's a devotee by name, um, Shetty ji, he happened to be the uh, contractor of um, Radha Rasbihari temple. So what happened was that when Radha Rasbihari deities came and you all must have studied in uh, uh, Leela Amrita, the entire ordeal that Shla Prabhupada had to go through to get the land. So Shla Prabhupada was uh, sitting in his desk and uh, Mr. Shetty and his wife were sitting in front of Prabhupada. Then Shetty Ji, now that we have this land, I want to build a, a beautiful temple for uh, you know Radha Rasa Bihari. So I don't know where to start the fundraising from. So immediately when Shla Prabhupada was expressing his heart to construct the temple for Radha Rasa Bihari. Shetiji's wife removed her earrings, her chain, her jewelry, and uh, she made a potli in her handkerchief and gave it to Shlabraba, saying that Shlabraba, this is our first offering for Shri Radha Rasabihari. So Prabhupada's heart was moved, and you know it was instantly instant uh, dedication. So then eventually the construction started. Uh, there are more details to this. It's a fantastic uh, story. Uh, about the entire Radha Ras Bihari episode. But anyway, Shetiji, every day when the construction was going on, he used to go to Srila Prabhupada to give him an update that so and so, you know, progress had happened, this is done, that is done. He used to go to Srila Prabhupada and give an update. One particular day, Shetiji was, you know, going to leave home. He was hesitant should he go to Prabhupada or not because he was completely. You know, filled with dirt, you know, head to toe, he was dirty because of being in the construction site. So he was hesitant, you know, should I go inside the room? Prabhupada might be taking rest or, you know, doing some writing. 
So uh, he was going there. I mean, he was hesitating, hesitating to go there. But then he thought in double hesitation that I, how will I go home without reporting the proper? So he went as it is. He just as he was, you know, in his, uh, you know, uh, dirt or whatever that is, he went into Prabhupada's room. So he offered obey to Prabhupada. Prabhupada looked at him. Before even he heard anything, he said, Shetiji, you are making a place for Radha Rasabihari and his dear devotees to live. Huh? I will ensure you to have a permanent place for staying in Goloka Brindhavan Dam. So, I personally heard this from Shetiji's transcendental mouth in 2002 in Sridham Brindhavan. This was 25th disappearance day celebration of uh, Shri Prabhupada. At that time, uh, Shetiji was crying and weeping and telling that I was, after all, just a contractor. I was not like initiated devotees. I was not attending Mangalarti. I may not be, you know, devotees as you guys are. He was pointing to the entire audience. But just because I performed devotional service to the Supreme Lord as directed by his dearest servant, Shla Prabhupada says, I'll ensure you a permanent place in Goloka Vrindavan. So he was telling, if I got that privilege, what to speak of all of you sincere servants, uh, what privilege you, know, you will all have. So coming back to our lesson, Darshana of the Supreme Lord. Darshana of the Supreme Lord is not just an accident. It is not just some formality. It is not just because Dhruva Maharaj suffocated the entire universe by his tapasya in fifth month. Uh, one one month, one one thing he gave up and finally he could attract the Lord's attention. It is because of Narada Muni's blessings. Uh, it is because everybody says this, you know, when Pranad Maharaj saw Narsingadev, it is Narada Muni's blessings. Priyavrata's, uh, you know, the story, of course, this is connected to uh, in fifth canto, you will all you know, read at some time. Uh, so everywhere, it is because of spiritual master's blessing. So, darshana is something that is a prayojana, it is the result of our endeavor. Like how we say, sambandha, abhideya, prayojana, sambandha with spiritual master, abhideya, you follow what he has instructed and done, and Prayojana is Darshana of the Supreme Lord. So Darshana is the first lesson. The second lesson is that his uh, Darshana immediately, you know, he got the blessings. Dhruva Maharaj was not knowing how to even respond. He saw the Supreme Lord. He wasn't knowing how to respond. So, when the Supreme Lord sees us doing endeavor, he bestows his benedictions. So, Darshana immediately provides blessings. So, I'm going to read that verse as the verse of this chapter, which is 494. So, this is a very interesting verse and uh, I just want to um, read this. Satam Vishwakshantam Atatvidam Harir Yatvasya Sarvasya Chahridi Avastitaha Pritanjalim Brahma Mayena Kambunam Pasparsha Bhalam Vipaya Kapole Although Duro Maharaj was a small boy, he wanted to offer prayers to the Supreme Personality of Godhead in suitable language. But because he was inexperienced, he could not adjust himself immediately. The Supreme Personality of Godhead being situated in everyone's heart could understand Dhruva Maharaj's awkward position. Out of his causeless mercy, he touched his conch shell to the forehead of Dhruva Maharaj who stood before him with folded hands. Purport. Every devotee wants to chant the transcendental qualities of the Lord. Devotees are always interested in hearing about the Lord's transcendental qualities 
and they are always eager to glorify these qualities but sometimes they feel inconvenienced by humbleness the personality of god at being situated in everyone's heart specifically specifically gives a devotee intelligence to describe him it is therefore understood that when a devotee writes or speaks about the supreme personality of god his words are dictated by the lord from within this is confirmed in bhagavad gita 10th chapter to those who constantly engage in the transcendental loving service of the lord the lord from within dictates what to do next in order to serve him then duro maharaj felt hesitant not knowing how to describe the lord for want of sufficient experience the lord out of his costless mercy touched his conscience to durva's forehead and he was transcendentally inspired this transcendental inspiration is called brahma maya because when one is thus inspired the sound he produces exactly corresponds to the sound vibration of the vedas this is not the ordinary sound vibration of this material world therefore the sound vibration of the hare krishna mantra although presented in the ordinary alphabet should not be taken as a mundane or material uh, so this is the verse of this chapter where it is very nicely explained uh, that how when you desire when you are eager when we are enthusiastic there is a reciprocation so we many times hesitate once indradum namaraj mentioned this many times devotees think or hesitate to take up service but one should know when somebody is blessed with the service by one's spiritual master the ability to perform that service is also provided by the spiritual master so the idea is that the i will say that i am you know uh, i am nobody i am i can i can have my own humility but our humility should not be the reason for our non performance our humility should be the reason for our performance because when i am showing humility and say how i cannot do the service there is something wrong many a times we think that oh no no i am so you know uh, you know i am not so capable i am not so qualified feeling like that is wonderful because technically as prabhupad explains brahma maya the words we speak the content that we deliver that service that is being successful the credit goes to the spiritual master and the supreme lord but because you chose yourself to be the instrument in their hands krishna still gives us some credit this is what krishna is telling arjuna in the second chapter of bhagavad gita hey my plan is intact i have already made up my scheme of things to ensure that these all miscreants are finished do you want to be party to this or not if you are not still this is going to go on how it will go on who will do this is none of your business but if you are party to this you enjoy the credit of it i mean in the sense that you will be part of the scheme similarly when we sometimes we are offered some services because of our conditioning we may show some tantrums we may say you know some responses which are not very you know devotional thinking that if i don't do this service let me see who else is doing service so never have such an attitude because krishna is giving us opportunity to go closer if you miss the opportunity nothing of krishna is going to be you know left behind somebody else will take it up so my second lesson in this chapter is darshana means darshana will give you blessings and the blessings the way krishna gives the blessings is to see your sincerity in your heart because duru maharaj was completely baffled 
He wasn't sure how he is supposed to respond. Uh, so Krishna touched, divine touch. So Narada Muni touched earlier in the previous chapter. In this chapter, Krishna is touching. So this is transcendental. So if you go to Krishna, he will send to you know devotees. If you go to devotees, he will send to Krishna. I used to always say this. Being a football type between Krishna and devotees is a very interesting arrangement. If you go to Krishna's lotus feet, he will send you to devotees' lotus feet. If you go to devotees' lotus feet, they will send you to Krishna's lotus feet. Devotee Krishna, Krishna, devotee, devotee Krishna, that's a wonderful arrangement. On a lighter note, I'm not sure how many of you had visited Mumbai and how many of you had seen the Mumbai local traffic experience. Uh, so I am from Mumbai and uh, I want to give you this example to understand this point. There is a station called Andheri and Kurla. These are all very famous stations. There are many stations. Monday morning, 8 a.m. If you want to board a local train in, in that station, you need to know some sort of a specific uh, you know, Kriya Mudra and some sort of a specific skills to board that train. The simple technique to board in the train uh, is make sure you stand in front of the gate. Because you, you know, those who regularly travel, they know how to, you know, where the you know trains uh, gate will come. Make sure you come and adjust yourself in front of the you know gate of the train, the door. Make sure there is somebody behind in front of you, somebody behind you. You'll never know how. How you entered in. And same thing in, when it comes to when you have to step out of the train. Make sure you are somehow adjusting yourself and come out of the, front of the gate. Somebody will push you out. The Sankirtan mission. I am not sure what qualification I have. I am not sure what background I come from. Mukam karoti vachalam pangum langayate girim yetripata maham mante shri gurum dinatarinam paramananda madhavam shri chaitanya yasuram. Even a lame man climb a mountain. This is not a bit of an exaggeration. If I am speaking Trimad Bhagavatam, as Prabhupada writes, not even a single word is mine. All copyrights, inspiration, content are of Shla Prabhupada and Krishna. He is just using me as an instrument so that I can learn some lessons. And especially when you are doing Zoom session, when you are spotlighted in front of you, you are only there. You are seeing yourself and speaking to yourself. So technically, these are all lessons for somebody who is speaking. So I should have the spirit that I am speaking for myself. And if others get benefit, I mean, maybe I can seek some blessings. So blessings for the second. And as soon as Krishna touched with the conscience, what was the natural third thing? Like a pravaha, like a river flow, Guru Maharaj started to offer prayers. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. One after the other. I mean, as a small five-year-old boy who didn't even finish his graduation properly, uh, he started uh, to offer prayers. You know, so wonderful prayers that uh, uh, it's very nice. He, he offered, you know, very nice prayers to Supreme Lord, and Supreme Lord was so attracted. You know, very happy. Uh, he looking at the prayers, he said that. Uh, I, I do not know what I was doing. Uh, something, you know, triggered me and I started uh, you know, desiring for something material. But somehow I got your blessings and he is opening up and this is something very, very important. Because when we receive blessings, when we are bestowed with these blessings, we need to know how to utilize the blessings to offer back to the source of our blessings. In Before coming to Krishna consciousness, that's not how you were. We go to the temple, we offer some prayers, put some dakshina, want to get some benediction, and we forget the temple. We celebrate the benediction. We go back to the temple only when next, next Durgatna happens, when next challenges happens. But when we surrender to Shla Prabhupada, Shla Prabhupada had thought what it means to be uh, performing devotional service. That taking Ganges water, offering back to Ganges. Taking Krishna's blessings, offering back to Krishna. Taking Guru Maharaj's blessings, offering back to Guru Maharaj. So, now Guru Maharaj really got into that mood. Even though he had a, you know, a, 
he had a different uh, different understanding altogether in terms of seeing the lord but his prayers were wonderful ones further down after the prayers what was the lord's response the lord's response was giving him transcendental benediction that benediction that's the fourth one that benediction that the lord offered to guru maharaj he had not offered to anyone else because he offered both opulences in his material manifested life and he offered eternal abode for him after the life typically we all want the same right you know we want all our material opulences are looked after and our krishna consciousness is also you know provided but kunti maharani doesn't say that velva mangala tagura doesn't say that many great saints doesn't say that because they don't go hand in hand if you are materially opulent then you are not spiritually opulent when you are materially thriving you are not spiritually in the sense when you are materially enjoying spiritual enjoyment is bereft i mean you are not going to get spiritual enjoyment but in case of guru maharaj krishna explained krishna inspired krishna offered such a benediction that you will get best of the both worlds so that is the benediction that you know you know this very rare benediction and sometimes uh, devotees are blessed sometimes devotees are so fortunate not everybody is given this blessings in the year 2005 when i was in boston i had a very interesting discussion with a devotee in boston so he was mentioning that he was a atheist but somehow he got in touch with shlabrabhas purpose and suddenly things changed in his life he became financially you know successful as well as uh, he became devotionally progressive so i have seen devotees who have come in contact with krishna consciousness and they became financially eager so it is not the yardstick is not about our financial pro- you know progress or weakness it is about recognizing that krishna hand on us guru's hand on us by how much service opportunity i am getting and how much i am surrounded by krishna's dear devotees these two yardsticks are good enough for us to conclude that we are also bestowed we are also our prayers were heard and our benediction was you know those two things and the fifth and the last lesson for this chapter is about the repentance of guru maharaj guru maharaj is repenting by saying that you know uh, oh my god what did i ask for i was part of the darshan i had one on one darshan with the supreme lord i had asked for something material how stupid i was i had asked for some temporary or something that is not so highest aho dukkam maha dukkam dukkha dukkha taram yata ஆச்சார்த்தம் and diamond for broken piece of glass so our dearest uh, guru maharaj also had some similar you know feeling of repentance that uh, he felt that i should have asked for something you know something way beyond similar feelings chitraketu had chitraketu after his uh, meeting with the uh, narada munis uh, you know uh, where narada muni gave him instructions for performing some vrata when he met uh, sankarishna so he is expressing them so it's very interesting that maybe we will come to krishna consciousness with some agendas akama sarvakama moksha kama va udharati tibrena bhakti yogena yajeta purusham param for different reason we will come to krishna but if you stay put if you follow the process if you get the blessings of vaishnavas 
especially if you get a direction from your spiritual authorities, then probably all those thrill elements will eventually go away one after the other, after the other, after the other. And finally, we will be able to get to our real core essence of Krishna consciousness. So, Guru Maharaj's repentance is an integral part of our spiritual progress. We have to repent for our mistakes. We have to repent for something that I have not done correctly. We have to go through this process of what, what I call as a guilt. This is not, sometimes guilt is sometimes bad to you and pull you down. But when you are the proper Sangha, with proper uh, you know, introspection, such repentance helps us. So that uh, concludes our chapter 9 of um, the uh, Guru Maharaj's episode. I know I have taken 55 minutes now. I'm not sure uh, uh, if I can pull, uh, pull anything longer. You have uh, you know, a lot more to do. That I thought that either I will you know, do two chapters you know, you know, properly rather than uh, uh, all the five, but uh, uh, I'm not sure how I'm supposed to, but this whole episode of Guru Maharaj uh, in, in total is going to help us in helping aligning our spiritual life. Uh, Guru Charitra is just not some uh, uh, some you know some some funny lesson. This is very very uh, relevant and relatable for us as sadhakas. I will have to stop here, respecting everyone's time. I will take some questions, and I am definitely open for more discussions uh, because, as I said, we are only giving a trailer. So. This trailer is enough for us to you know, tease us to study more of Guru Maharaj. Shila Prabhupada ki jai, Grantra Srimad Bhagavatam ki jai, Nitai Gaura Premanande, Hari Hari Gaur. Thank you, Prabhupada. And uh, your yeah, devotees, if you have any question, please raise the hand and unmute yourself. Yes, Rani Mataji. Can, Thank you, yeah. Prabhuji, that is Pranam. Uh, Prabhuji, very nice class, beautiful explanations. Uh, Prabhuji, just wanted to understand, uh, here uh, we see that uh, uh, Narada Muni tests Dhruva, and when he is satisfied, he gives him uh, uh, the process, how to go about it. So, Prabhuji, in our life, when do we know that we are getting tested, and how should our determination be? Um, thank you so much, uh, Prabhuji. Uh, for the question. The test is very simple. Anytime when your intelligence is challenged, especially for example, when I am coming into Krishna consciousness, we come into Krishna consciousness from different, different backgrounds. Some of us come from a background to learn something. Some of okay. us come to Krishna consciousness because we have some problems. Some of us come to Krishna consciousness because you know, something is exciting and we want to just... So there are many, many reasons why we come to Krishna consciousness. Now, once we are in Krishna consciousness, what is the first thing that we are taught? We are taught to chant. When we are, when we are taught to chant, then we start building up our own storyline. Okay, I will chant. I will become a nice devotee. I will make money. I will become rich. I will become famous. I will get a good, good spouse. I will get whatever. So, all those prayers, they come in. And we have our own assumption that my Krishna consciousness is going to give me some, you know, mukuta, some krita, some vaido, you know, uh, some sort of a uh, you know opulence to me, but many a times that's not the case. So we are pushed in challenges to an extent. Sometimes we start wondering, "Are my problems increase when I came to Krishna consciousness? I see more challenges to me when I am in Krishna consciousness." So the tests are threefolded. I would say number one, when you are challenged in what you call your intelligence is challenged, your, your sense gratificatory propensity is challenged. When you are trying to walk in the path of sense gratification, that which is curtailed in some form or the other. As I said, Prabhupada's uh, statement, and Prabhupada said that his business was going on very well, and suddenly everything started to collapse. So it's a test. So it is apparently to take you away from Krishna. Somebody will come, something will come, which will kind of demotivate. It's a test. Kali's agenda is to pull you backwards. Kali's agenda is to make you dislike devotees. Kali's agenda is to kind, kind of disrupt. The second is second test is when our spiritual master gives us some service, how we effectively perform, how focusedly we perform, 
and his feedback because prabhupas servants they had experience of serving shla proper and many a times they apparently did it in their own way the proper disagreed some artists who were very good painters or artists they they drew wonderful picture according to them but shla proper said this is all not this is all nonsense this is all you know completely non bona fide so sometimes we may think that i have done a great service but uh, you know eventually you get corrected so the second way by which you know you are being tested is sometimes your spiritual authority your spiritual master points out sometimes you may not like that pointing out but it is important for us to take it up and the third test is where we are performing devotional service like for example when we are moving forward in krishna consciousness in doing some missionary activities absolutely focused on the missionary activity but still there will be some obstacles that will be you know uh, coming in your way of you will think that hey i was not sense gratifying i was genuinely performing i was completely focused still obstacles are coming you see every vaishnava saint tukara maharaj pandavas you, you name every vaishnava saint bhaktivedanta swami prabhu pad so they were put in through certain situations and in spite of the challenges in spite of those situations they had outperformed they had simply focused on the service recently we had uh, gopal krishna maharaj uh, you know memorial celebration all over the all over the world and one repeated point that we hear in those offering is how he was undeterred no obstacle in the way could stop him from performing the work of service so these three are three different ways by which we can experience there may be many more but these are all some things that i could uh, you know list here bang sense yes prabhu ji thank you prabhu ji one Hi. doubt which i had is uh, like shrila prabhupad was doing his business and uh, when it did not do well he accepted it at as providence and thinking of going into krishna consciousness this is krishna's way of doing it so how do you draw take the balance between you know determination there in doing business and 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 uh, thinking okay this is a will of providence and i have to do this so hari krishna that's my question it is said that as soon as you take shelter of your spiritual master and the spiritual process if you are sure about it the entire control of your life is passed on to your spiritual master and the supreme lord it is said that after surrendering to the spiritual master even your body belongs to your spiritual master in the sense that you are supposed to look after yourself because it is not yours it is your spiritual master you have surrendered to him in a technical layman language if i say if i am a slave of someone i do not have claim i cannot claim something is of mine so this is a very funny way of saying it but it is in a truest sense if i have surrendered to my spiritual master i am telling him i am yours uh, the song that shila prabhupada wrote in jaladuta He says, "My dear Lord, I am like a puppet in your hand. Make me dance, make me dance the way you want to make me dance." So, from that perspective, when we have surrendered to the Supreme Lord, at least whether you are doing business, whether you are doing job, whether you are doing, doing everything, you need to focus. How do I dovetail? How do I orient? How do I focus the entire energy and the result of this for glorifying Krishna and the Supreme Lord? So it is, you know, in Chaitanya Charitamrita, it is very nicely mentioned. Stane, Stita, Stuti Katan, Anuvan, Manobi. Wherever you are, you can perform devotion service. Vairagya Vidya, Nijab Bhakti Yoga. If you have Vairagya to perform, then what happens? Then these two, wherever you are, have a Vairagya. Then whether you are doing business, whether you are in the temple, whether you are anywhere, your dress and address don't matter. But your heart matters. You may have a dress of a devotee, but if your consciousness is of a karmi, then what is the value? So the idea is that our surrender to Krishna will take control everything to Krishna. So everything that happens after that uh, is because of Krishna. It is not because of anything. So all your karma is finished. The moment you are surrendered, your karma is burnt, completely to zero. The day you surrendered to spiritual master, the spiritual master accepted you. 
your karma quotient is zero, tends to zero. What is left is your offenses in case, in case if you have done, you have to ask for forgiveness and rest of the journey is only education. Anartha and everything. Just go on removing one, one anartha. There is more science to this, but I guess uh, this is enough. Any sense? Thank you, Prabhuji. I think we have one more question. <clears throat> yeah, Prabhuji, if you unmute yourself. So in the same line, Prabhu did. This is uh, Sham Gopal Prabhu. So, so when this, uh, the Diksha is taken, right? So after that, if you do not meet spiritual master, so how do you perform, right? So you may have Shiksha Guru, but how do you like the, how do you take that as a, what kind of, uh, how will you find a trigger point there? It's very important to, to know that Guru Tattva is one. Everybody may, may, may not necessarily get a physical, you know, one-on-one -on -one Vapu association. One time, uh, Indradumna Maharaj was here in uh, Mumbai, Radha Gopina Temple, gave a Bhagavatam class. And he was talking about Guru's instructions and following and stuff like that. So, suddenly at the end of the class, one devotee asked, Gurudev, I've never received a personal instruction in my life. So, Maharaj said, he gave an example, very interesting example. I'm talking about uh, maybe 15 years before, 10, 15 years before. Maharaj said that if Jayapataka Maharaj has to give personal instruction to each one, each and every one of his disciples, probably it will take a few lifetimes before anyone else to get a personal instruction. At the time, Jayapataka Maharaj had 15,000 15, disciples. Uh, now he has more. But the point is, that then he made, every disciple should think that when my Guru Maharaj is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam, he is speaking Srimad Bhagavatam to me. So I will tell you three points to understand this. Number one, the way instructions are is threefolded. One is principle. Number two is specifics of the service. Number three is feedback of the service. Many times what happens is that we you do not look. When you are doing any service, you need to know underlying principle. What is my mood? What is my intent? What is my direction? Those are all the things that we need to know. That we get in Bhagavatam sessions. So when we hear Srimad Bhagavatam, we get instructions for our devotional principles. The mood is very nicely imparted. What is the mood of my spiritual master is very nicely communicated. It is very important. Because attitude of a follower makes our you know, Krishna consciousness complete. Number two is about the specific of your service. The specifics of your service is always given by local authorities who are representatives of your spiritual master. Siksha Guru or even the temple management. Because in ISKCON ecosystem, temple management or local authorities, they are representing Prabhupada. Your spiritual master is representing Prabhupada. And definitely... When you are having a Siksha association, you will also be in the same. So all of them are not contradicting. So typically a practicing devotee, if he is a congregation, he needs to learn to cooperate in the local Sangha and participate in service unless he is given, he is blessed, he is fortunate enough to have one-on-one -on -one personal instruction to him, which is not necessary, but if you get it, it is great. Third, in terms of feedback, how will I know that the service that I'm doing is, you know, correctly being done? The feedback is of two parts. One is natural feedback of the service that you have done. Second is the transformation in your heart. Natural feedback is will be given by those who have given service to you. Prabhuji, you have done the service very nicely or not, not nicely. You could have done or whatever it is. But the subtle feedback is the heart gets transformed. Which means... Your sense gratificatory propensity reduces. Your taste for chanting increases. You are, you are trying to become less envious towards others. This is a natural self-test. The reason we are suffering in this world is because of our enviousness. So how will I know my service is going on nicely? Your sense gratificatory propensity will reduce or at least there will be a guilt-ridden sense gratification. 
prior to this we are self gratifying without any guilt now when we are doing there is some some guilt in, inside which is good sign eventually you will give up and number 2 that your chanting taste will increase number 3 the feeling of enviousness towards every jeeva will come down am i making sense prabhu thank you that that really helped uh, hari krishna thank you hari krishna thank you prabhu ji uh, anyone any other question or uh, let's say thanks to prabhu ji by chanting hari krishna maha mantra three times if you all can unmute yourself hari krishna hari krishna 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 hari 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 हरे राम हरे राम 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 हरे 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 कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम राम कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम 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 हरे राम 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 हरे थैंक यू वेरी मच प्रभु जी धन्यवाद प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण प्रणाम हरे कृष्ण प्रणाम